Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater bus covering all things theater. Uh, and I have a special guest today, my friend Will Pomerantz, the director of the musical Vanities. It is coming to the York Theater. Uh, it's opening next week, I think. Uh, Will, Will, right. Will Pomerantz, thank you so much to do this. Will is an amazing director. Uh, he, he's... I mean, he's worked all over the country. Uh, he's the associate artistic director of the Bay Street Theater in Sag Harbor, where he's re-envisioned Vita and uh, just recently uh, Ragtime. Uh, to, I mean, they were just mind-bogglingly fabulous. He, he is a real creative genius. So it's our pleasure to have you here today. Thank you for coming to do this, Will. Vanity's The Musical is based on a play from the early 70s by Jack Hefner. It was a huge hit off Broadway. It ran for over five years. It was uh, kind of a landmark because there weren't a lot of plays about women at that time. And Jack had gone to various really? producers and said, you know, I have this play about these three women. And they said, nobody's interested in women. And he said, and he, and he knew that wasn't true. And he got a producer that was done in the early years of Playwrights Horizons. It was a big hit for them. It transferred to off Broadway and it ran for five years. Um, it was then done all over the country at every regional theater. It's been done internationally. I don't know how how many thousands of productions of Vanities there's been. There have been incredible actresses along the way. Kathy Bates was in the original production of Vanities, uh, Sandy Duncan, Stockard Channing. Anybody you know who's an accomplished actress did that play at some point. Um, then years later, uh, a wonderful composer named David Kirschenbaum began to uh, develop a musical version of it with Jack. And it premiered in New York. Jack wrote the original book that the play was based upon. That is correct. Yeah. Jack wrote it, adapted it, and became the book writer for the musical. And David Kirschenbaum wrote the music and the lyrics. And I hear, I hear the music is really playful and lovely. And it nice. is very, very cleverly. The play takes place in the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s, up to 1990. It starts in 1963, goes to 1990. And he playfully draws on the... Draws on the it, carry, it, 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 it covers these three women through all these decades. It traces their so relationship with each other through all of these. And each decade, each scene is a different decade. And David has very artfully and playfully drawn from the genres of each of those periods. So in the 60s scene, and when they're in high school, there's all this kind of wonderful girl group, Supremes, Ronettes, feeling to the music that, and wonderful close harmonies that this incredible cast sings. And in the 70s, it's more of a singer songwriter, sort of Carol King, Paul Taylor, I'm not Paul Taylor, um, oh, wow. uh, Paul Taylor's the choreographer. Uh, um, you know, what's his name, Taylor, the singer-songwriter, yes. that era of the 70s. And then the 80s becomes a little bit more pop rock driven in a wonderful way. And then there's also sort of real classic music theater uh, sounds also within the score. But it's a really wonderful, variated score. And again, very playful, very wonderful. And How many musical numbers altogether? I think they're probably about 16 to 18, including reprises. Um, he's also, uh, David is a master of the reprise and really repurposing uh, songs in really wonderful ways. I'm really, I'm, I really am a big fan of his work, I have to say, and Jack's, of course, as well, who's a master. So I feel very fortunate to work with this with you. Know what, well, it's real special. Now, when they, they did this as second stage in 2009, but it's been revised dramatically. That's correct. That, that's uh, correct. Uh, there have been revisions. Uh, they did it in a, a production out in Seattle at Fifth Avenue Theater. It was then done in London in a small theater on the West End. And they worked in both of those uh, situations and created I, what I consider just really essential new material. There's material that links the scenes together in these sort of beautiful um, transitional moments that are really stunning, really beautiful uh, music. And I hope I've been trying to wow. match it in the staging. Um, and there's, they also oh, changed the is. final song. The, the the final the ending is a, is different, very different than it was before. Um, the the approach to the show uh, also in this particular production is quite different. I'm going to give you a little sense of the 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 set is a white room. It all takes place in this white room, and there's three vanities there. I think you can catch those a little bit. And it's it's not, it's not. usually done in a very detailed, you know, they dress like in their 60s clothes, and then they dress in their 70s clothes, and they have wig changes. And we're not doing any of that. We're showing passage of time in a very different and very theatrical way that I'm excited about, and that puts focus really on the material and this incredible cast that I really want to talk about because they are going to really, I think, take New York by storm and blow the roof off of this place. I mean, they already are. We had our first preview last night, and 
you know, people jump to their feet at the end and I, and deservedly so for this cast. They really, they are singular, each one of them. Well, you have a special gift, I mean, amongst all your other gifts, but one of your special gifts is really casting and how you put, find incredibly talented people that fit yeah. the role so beautifully and, and, and uh, bring something special you to everything say you that. I, the, I did a remount of the Evita. I first did at Bay Street, and two of the women from that production are both in Broadway shows now. One is one of the leads, actually, in Sweeney Todd, uh, Maria Bilbao, and... Um, the woman who played Ava Peron uh, is is in the ensemble of New York, New York. So, uh, Gabrielle, I'm so excited. Both of them. And the, our lead in Ragtime is in that huge production of Secret Gardens. Uh, Derek Davis, he's doing the, the lead in um, Secret Garden at the Mark Taper. So, anyway, wonderful people I've gotten to work with. I've Jay Jones is, is, is the first, first, there are three women, and then there's uh, order, um, yeah. one that's. Right. So Jade is a, a wonderful uh, performer and really singular. And she most recently was part of the DC theater community and really took that place, uh, made a big stir down there. She was recently cast in a production of Beauty and the Beast. She played Belle and it was non-traditional casting for many reasons. And it really brought a special new aspect to that show and people were just wowed and she became something of an internet sensation. Uh, you can you can see her a uh, couple of clips of her in, from Beauty and the Beast. This will be her first New York show, which I'm super excited to be the show that helps uh, present her to New York. So it's a New York stage show. New York stage show, yeah. A New York stage yeah, show. Yeah. So, yes, we're excited. She's excited. She just recently moved to New York this past fall and she's really excited, uh, you know, to to be part of the New York community. Um, and then we also have a wonderful cast member, Amy Kuhn. Uh, and a Amy was most recently in K-pop on Broadway. And she... Oh, I saw her. Yeah, she was dynamite. Right. She's, I, I, I was, she's yeah. fantastic and uh, plays a really interesting character in the show uh, who has a, a really interesting journey. So really excited about her. All three of them are incredible singers and also incredible actors. This is a really, more than many musicals I've worked on, it is a true acting vehicle as well as a singing and dancing vehicle. These characters are beautifully drawn and you really have a journey with them over the course of this evening. And we see them in high school, then we see them in college, then we see them after college, and we see them again even later in life. And they have taken quite a journey together and it's really quite moving. And then and Haley is the and third Haley girl. Haley Pachun is the, third uh, woman and in the cast, and she is a Broadway veteran. She's been in many shows, and she was in Hello, Dolly. And she, she was in Mean Girls. She was in Mean, uh, well, she no, in mean uh, Girls. That's our, our cover. Olivia Kaufman was in Mean Girls. But she has been in many oh, Broadway sorry, shows. Haley is the consummate pro, and really, you know, is, we're just so lucky to have her. We're lucky to have all of them. They are well, let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's talk about the woman who has to cover all these three yes. roles and and learn everything. Yeah. Still, what's her name again? It's Olivia Kaufman. What's yeah, Olivia name? Kaufman. So first, first of all, I'll say yeah. for, for, for all performers involved in the show. You know, when you think, oh, it's a three-person musical. Oh, that's oh, how nice and how easy to do versus a ten-person musical or twelve-person musical or twenty-person. But it's actually more. It's more difficult because it's just three of them and they have to carry the whole evening and they they almost never leave the stage. In fact, one actor never leaves the stage. The other two have a brief time off stage. Um, so it's quite it's quite something and it's a, it's a lot of material for three people and it's their solos and their duets and their trios one after the other and their real meaty book scenes. So so they, it's, there's a lot already if, just as an individual performer. So imagine if you were the cover for all three of those roles. So you multiply that and three by three, and it's quite an extraordinary uh, task that uh, she has before her. And she's been a complete pro, Olivia. And she's stepped in during rehearsals. We had a, a, a an illness at one point, and, and you know, so it's really wonderful to know that Olivia is there. And if we ever need her, she'll be able to jump in. She's an amazing performer, and yes was in uh, the Broadway company, I believe, National Tour also of Mean Girls. Um, let me show you the theater. It's a lovely theater. I'm going to pivot around. Are you in the theater I'm right in the theater now? right now. Uh, this is, this the is St. Jean's. Oh, and wow. It's a lovely, lovely theater. I encourage you all to come out. Um, I'm probably going to... It's on 76th and... It's 76th, just, just, just uh, off of Lex. So you can just t you can take the Lexington line to 77th, and it's literally a block away. But yeah, it's 77... 76 and, and we'll tell them where to get 
Vegas too. You, you want to go to base? Uh, it's, it's York Theater. Dot org. York, is it? York Theater. Dot org. So if you just put in York Theater, uh, their website will come up. Uh, yeah. And they're a wonderful company. They've been around a long time. They're completely devoted to pre presenting musicals, both new musicals and musicals that really deserve another look, such as this one. Uh, and we're really excited to be able to bring this material to New York audiences. The York and James Morgan are absolutely fabulous people. They do wonderful yeah. work. I'm a, I'm a fan of everything they do. And let's thank Ricky Kane Larimer, who is bringing this to the, to us in association with the York. It's yes, a, to, uh, She's a yeah. I mean, in the theater here. Ricky is a powerhouse, and uh, she has really uh, been a wonderful supporter of the York and of my work, and. and really help make this marriage happen so that we could work together. And yes, without her, this wouldn't have happened. So a lot of gratitude to her. And in, in terms of Jim Morgan, I think both he and the York are a national treasure and should be uh, treated accordingly. And they've been a wonderful host. Yeah. Bravo. And real quickly, before we do the set, I just want to show them the poster because we have a poster, a picture of the poster uh, from the show, which we can put that So uh, I'm just going to walk around. Uh, there's oh, wow. this is so the set is called I mean the show is called vanities we do we have three vanities tables we have these dress forms which you'll see in the past I'll just tell you this is we talked I talked about this in terms of the approach the dress forms the way that we signify the change of time is each scene has a new set of costumes on the dress form so we see what the characters would have been wearing in the first scene they're all in their cheerleader outfits because they're all cheerleaders in the second scene in the 70s uh, they're in a uh, i mean later in the 60s the second scene they're in a sorority so we see them in their sort of sorority years and in the third scene it's the early 70s so they're in wonderful 70s duds and then in the last scene it's 1990 and they're they're actually attending a funeral and they're all in sort of stylish black clothing. So it keeps changing uh, the, what's on the dress forms. The dress forms are used in different ways in the course of the evening. Now, what about the actors? They have the same thing on throughout? They do, which again is a, an unusual, hasn't been done in this way before. But again, in my mind, was an attempt to really put the focus on the material and the music and the scenes and not sort of be distracted by the sort of detailed sort of what can easily become kind of a kitschy aspect of things when people do 60s and 70s, things that take place in the 60s and 70s. Um, and there, it has a more stripped down quality, which I'm finding, I'm hoping audiences will find effective. Uh, I certainly find it uh, an exciting way to explore this material and the creators seem to be very happy with it as well. What about props are you doing without props? Are you using yeah, props yeah, or not having asking. props? Yeah, props are kept to actually a minimum. There are some crucial props like the character that Amy Kuhn plays, his name is Kathy, her name is Kathy, and she is very organized and very, likes to have her life under control, so she always has this notebook, and she makes lists from starting in high school all the way through her life, making lists of what she needs to do to have an organized life. She has a song called An Organized Life, and it's a wonderful song, and this notebook is, appears in multiple scenes, and finally, it's a big moment for her, the decision of whether she can and should let go of the list, basically, let go of the notebook. And her friends are there to help her, you know, make the right decision there. So there are certain <laughs> crucial thoughts. Like, I've always had my notebook, too. You're a list person, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to give up your notebook. But uh, then that, that, that <laughs> moment then causes her to go on a certain journey, which is really wonderful. Um, other crucial thoughts. You know, the other thing is when you have a set like this, which has very little color. There are moments when color appears that's very, you know, it's very exciting because in a world denuded of color, color suddenly becomes extremely powerful. And the lighting, I should mention, my, I'm collaborating again with Mike Billings, with whom I collaborated with on Evita and Ragtime at Bay Street and many other shows with him. And he is an absolute oh, wow. master. And this is a wonderful kind of canvas for him to paint on in light. And he uses color quite... Does it, does it make it easier? Does it make it easier because it's white? It makes it easier. It's an to, 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 it makes it easier and it makes it harder. I'll try to make it clear why. Easier in that oh. <laughs> you can see things when they happen. You really see them. When color changes, you really see that. When you have gobos or those things that cause patterns to appear, you really see those. The challenge is when you really want to isolate someone or have a, a, a one specific part of the stage, 
it's difficult. It's more difficult because light bounces around the, the set. If you have an all black set, light just kind of stops. It, it hits a spot and it stops. Here it bounces around. So that, that then it becomes more challenging in that way. So you gain some things and you lose some things. In this case, yeah, I think that we by far have gained more than we've lost by having our light box. But I, the, the lighting is absolutely sure. wonderful. Yeah, sure. The costumes, it's an interesting thing for the costume designer too, because she was costuming the dress forms, you know, as much as the actors. Right. They, each actor has their basic outfit, which then has to be designed and specific to them. And, um, but then she's designing these multiple looks for each of the four scenes. So I think it's been fun for her too. And she's helped us figure out a way to drape them and make them all look gorgeous. So, yeah. So are there no other props either? Just the notebook or do, do some There are a few others. There's, there's, there's like a period. I'm, dri I'm driving at this. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, there are a few others, but there's a, a, a period life magazine to help us, us again identify when, where we are, when we are. Um, what else uh -huh. is there? Um, I don't want to give away things, but uh, there's there's okay, I don't want to there's very too much well, there are very I mean, few props, and it's very much focused on the material and the actors and the journey of these characters. That that was the overriding thing. And the other thing I'll mention is, for me, always in working in music theater, the music is what guides me in terms of. Yeah. And I really, I have to mention a couple other people, and I'd be hugely remiss if I didn't. Please. Um, those are uh, the choreographer, Shannon Lewis. Shannon Lewis is a Fosse dancer, among other things. She was part of the lineage. She oh, was wow. trained by Gwen Verdon. She was in the original uh, version of, the, not the original, the second version of dance, of, of Fosse, sorry, the, the Fosse, the show Fosse. Yes. There's only been one version, sorry, of that. There have been now two versions of dancing. She was in Fosse. She uh, wonderfully did the number I Gotcha and was hugely memorable. You can see it online. But she is a master. I mean, she really is at, at the top of her game. She's a wonderful choreographer and has brought some wonderful vocabulary to this. And she also really knows how to work with actors and everything is very character driven, which I really appreciate. And uh, anyway, she's just a consummate pro and I just would love working with her. The other person I would mention is Deborah Abramson, who's our music director, has been who has, uh, has really just done so many, so much work on new musicals and is just one of the mainstays of the industry. And she is just absolutely meticulous, a perfectionist in every way. And, and I really appreciate her having such high standards. She really brings a lot this and has assembled a dynamite band. Wait till you hear this band. And I, and this, you know, the, the there's some wonderful instrumentation. How many in the band? Uh, How many? There are five in the band, but it sounds like ten because each of them plays <laughs> multiple <laughs> instruments. So well. There, the reed player <laughs> plays six different, different instruments. Yeah, <laughs> the percussionist plays marimba, vibraphone, celeste, as well as a drum kit, and as well as other hand drumming things. There's a great variety in the arrangements by Lynn Schenkel, and it's a it's a very different sound than what the uh, what is uh, often produced. I think by this organization, it has a a, a poppier feel to it, and it has a, a different sound. And you know, there's it, all these other influences like Burt Bacharach. There's a song that sounds like a Burt Bacharach tune, which I love, and uh, has that instrumentation from the late '60s. It's so fabulous. So, anyway, really like, across the board, this creative team has been amazing. The sound designer, uh, Julian Evans, and who else am I forgetting anybody else? Uh, sound, we talked about lights, we talked about, oh, and the costume designer, uh, Barbara Dello. Uh, again, top of the line people that I'm so thrilled to work with. So I, I, for me, uh, you know. Well, well it's, it's a special gift to pull really gifted people together to share your vision and your passion. It's so, it's so exciting to hear you talk about this. It makes me more excited yeah. to see it. I can't yeah. wait because you have such passion for the piece and I've seen your work before. So I'm really, really excited to see what's going to happen with this. Let's tell them all one more time they, 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 to go to, it's York Theater with an R-E dot com yes. uh, to get tickets. Uh, and the, the, the show is running from March 21st through April 22nd only. It's a limited run. Yeah. Uh, so, so York Theater with an R-E dot Org. And if, if folks, and I'll mention one more thing, if folks can come during the preview period through March 29th, they, there's a special code. You can get $35 tickets 
And that code is van first, V as in vanities, V-A-N first. And you can plug that in at the website and get a cheap ticket through uh, our through March 29th, our last preview. Where, where else can they find that? Can we? Can I post it on my website? That thing. Sure. Van, Van first, the code. Yeah. Okay, that'd be wonderful. I'll post. I'll post it with the with the with the with the with the uh, whatever. Anyway, we'll post it. Right. <laughs> wonderful. The, 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 I, I, I'm so excited. We have. We actually have a few more minutes. We didn't get our crowd coming in. Uh, is there anything else you want to share that we haven't hit on about about well, this? Well, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'd love to talk a little bit more about the material. I can talk about that. And, and collaborating with uh, David Kirschenbaum, the composer lyricist, has been a real joy. He really is uh, a true man of the theater. He really uh, understands how theater works. He happens to be a wonderful tunesmith. There's some just gorgeous melodies in this thing and some really catchy tunes and again that he really knows how to ride that pop beat uh so beautifully in a way that is very theatrical um we never really get to like a hard rock thing more of a pop uh, rock thing uh but he really he he understands how to adapt these different genres to the theater in a way that i find very exciting and again jack hefner who is a landmark writer in the american theater uh, Again, I just feel so blessed to be able to collaborate with them on this, and and I, they seem really happy, which I'm happy about. We had our first preview last night. Again, the audience seemed to really enjoy it, and uh, I'm again, I, I I consider it just a sort of privilege to be able to work on the show and to give it another a chance for the folks in New York in the New York area to take another look at it. Because I, I, you know, there was a guy uh, here last night, Michael Glor, who's seen. He, he sees a lot of new work, new music theater work, and he said it's one of the best new musicals he has seen in many years, actually. He said he was so excited. So this is someone Jim Morgan mentioned to me. So um, I think if people like musicals, if people are interested in, in more recent musicals and where, where we're going, uh, I, I think they'll really appreciate this piece. Oh, wow. And, and, and it's really timely in terms of a, a woman's story because yeah. it's women are getting really more bonded with what's happened with Roe versus Wade. It's true. It's true. I mean, yeah. it's, I mean yeah. it's really, they don't quite understand yeah. how it affects I mean, they do, but it's not their body. It's, a, you know, it's women's, women's bodies. Yeah. The piece is very much a celebration of women and the relationships of between women. Uh, and the complexity of those and the importance of those, as well as the, it's a, a wonderful critique Jack created, uh, a satire and critique of the way that society gives women certain signals and pressures as to how they're supposed to behave or look or interact with each other. And this is a celebration of three women who are able to throw off those expectations and discover something authentic within themselves through that journey. So it's very timely in that way as women are losing control and are facing these pressures both here and around the world in an increased so I just So it's their friendship that allows them to discover these things about themselves. Correct. And, and allowing them to change and grow stronger, you know, through their through their friendship and the and the challenges that they face, you know, within their own friendships too. Yeah, that's how we discover. Right. It sounds yeah. beautiful. It sounds really heartwarming too. I, I really, <laughs> I look forward to seeing it. So, and you, you, you have, you, I, what do you, the people is coming into the theater going to have a rehearsal? What's going to happen yeah, so right I, now? We sort of, uh, people are starting to enter. I don't know. They're, they've been walking around behind the screen, but uh, we're about to, we're going to start. But what are you going to do? You had your first preview, but you're still rehearsing. We're in previews. So, so we're yeah, we're going to rehearse this afternoon for the second preview yes, we're going to rehearse tomorrow afternoon for the th before the third preview we'll put in notes i took notes on the performance last night some of it's technical in terms of light some of it's acting stuff so we're about to start doing that the actors are actually now getting into their microphones and uh, we're about to begin yeah how exciting how exciting well will thank you so much for doing this we can we can end this a little bit short we're only Amazing. a couple of minutes and you can go back and take care of all your people and do what you need right. to do and uh we'll be fine i look forward so we'll, i'm going to see what's opening is march, what, march 30th i think it? that's a thursday march 30th you're, you're one day at yeah. a time <laughs> go <Okay>. for it <laughs> thanks have a great have a great right. thanks so much thank you thank you